Machendranath and Dattatreya have been held as the greatest yogis in the tradition, a pot, a jug of wine on one lap and a young woman on his other lap. He just looked, Dattatreya looked drunk. This is a demo for Pirushurama because he's a man of immense capabilities. In certain schools of yoga, they classify yogis into three categories. These are referred to as Mandha, Madhyama and Uttama. Mandha means uh, he has tasted what it means to be conscious. He has tasted the source of creation, he has known the oneness but not able to keep it throughout the day. He needs to remind himself. When he reminds himself, when he's aware, he's there. When he is not aware, he loses that whole experience. Nobody can be effortfully conscious for twenty-four hours. If you're making an effort to be conscious, if you can manage it for a few seconds or minutes, it's a big thing. Otherwise it'll go all over the place. <coughs> so the first stage of a yogi is called mandha. The second stage of the yogi is called madhyama, that means medium. He is constantly in perception, but the inner dimension and what's beyond is in perception, but what is here he cannot manage. You have… Uh, being in India, definitely you have heard of various yogis who were worshipped, but they were absolutely incapable of anything in their life. Many of them at a certain phases of their life, they even had to be reminded to eat and go to the toilet. Even that had to be taken care of. They became like helpless infants. But they were in a fantastic state within themselves. But uh, however fantastic it is, you cannot remain in that state because being disconnected from the physical world, you cannot remain in the physical body. If you have to maintain your physical body, you must have some competence with the physical world, otherwise you cannot manage it. The third state of a yogi is constantly in perception of the ultimate. At the same time, he is perfectly in tune with the outside. To an extent, you do not know whether he is really a yogi or not. <laughs> Dattatreya, you heard of Dattatreya? Dattatreya? Oh, that's some good news. Because Machendranath and Dattatreya have been held as the greatest yogis in the tradition among all the a galaxy of realized beings, these two have been held as the greatest among them. Machyandranath, because of the way he existed, people consider him as the reincarnation of Shiva. With Dattatreya, people around him said he is the reincarnation of Shiva, Vishnu and Brahma at once. 
This is people's way of expressing it. When they saw something about that person, though he's in the human form, nothing human at all, this doesn't mean he's inhuman, yes, definitely not human. So when they saw such qualities, they could only compare him to Shiva, Vishnu, Bra Brahma like this. They said he is the reincarnation of all the three. So sometimes you will see Dattatraya's images with three heads because he is the reincarnation of all the three. Dattatraya lived a very enigmatic life. Even today, the clan which grew out of him, they follow certain things, a powerful clan. You might have definitely you heard of Kanfats. These are the worshippers of Dattatreya. Even today they walk around with black dogs. Dattatreya always had black dogs around him, spotlessly black. Or, uh, I will not go into this dog business. <clears throat> There's a whole lot of things about it. He used dog in a certain way. You know, if you have a dog at home, he's little more perceptive than you. <laughs> yes or no? In smell, in hearing, in vision, he seems to be little better than you. So Dattatreya, took the dog to a different level and he chose those dogs which were completely jet black. Even today, the Kanfats have these dogs with them. They won't let their dogs walk, they will carry them on their shoulders and walk, big dogs. <clears throat> because it was Dattatraya's pet, so they treat him. Uh, very special. After two hundred generations, still what he set up still runs. Still it's one of the largest clans of spiritual seekers. When Parashurama, the axe hacker, <laughs> anything that he saw, he hacked up with his axe, including his mother. A man of very volatile emotions, in many ways, without participating in it, Purusharam decided the fate of Kurukshetra war. He fixed Karna in the very beginning. He had enormous capabilities but his emotional volatility did not allow him to perceive the divine every moment of his life off and on, off and on, bad weather most of the time. So he went to many, many gurus or teachers. When he found they did not have what he's looking for, he hacked them. Yes. <laughs> and then, he came towards Dattatreya. People told him, Dattatreya is your answer. He came, still with his axe. When he was coming towards Dattatreya's place, many of the spiritual seekers had gathered. They looked into his ashram and ra were running away. This is not a spiritual place. When Parashuram walked in to Dattatreya's abode. He looked, here was a man who was sitting with a pot, a jug of wine on one lap and a young woman on his other lap. He just looked, Dattatreya looked drunk. Parashuram looked at him, put his axe down for the last time 
and prostrated himself. Everybody else left. The moment he prostrated, the jug of wine and the woman disappeared. And Dathatraya was just sitting there with his dog at his feet. Purusharam found his salvation to Dathatraya. This is a demo for Purusharam because he's a man of immense capabilities, but this capability is finding expression in anger, finding expression in a state of emotional volatility that it always finds negative expression, tremendous power finding negative expression. Suddha Tathreya employed a certain ploy and when Purusharama could see beyond the wine and the woman and his drunkenness and still know that Dattatreya was constantly in touch with the divine. That moment became his opening. If he was that perceptive right through his life, a lot of people would have been spared the axe.